Hi Flosstube, I'm Lori and welcome to Once Upon a Stitch. I won't tell you how many times I started this video. I actually went through the whole thing and decided I didn't like it. So I'm going to just go with it this time and I'm going to hope for the best. I just felt that sometimes I was talking about something and I got off on a tangent and I didn't finish what I was saying. Um, anyway, welcome. I'm Lori and this is Once Upon a Stitch and it is uh, Friday, November 12th. It's my planning video for 2022. I'll try to be as accurate as possible in explaining what my thought process is. If you would like to join me, um, of course, with patterns that you select, that's great because um, every month I'm going to have maybe like a little theme of what I'll be stitching that month. And if it fits into your rotation, that's wonderful. Um, we can do it together. Um, it's just um, a suggestion and what my planning plans are. Um, so the first thing I did is um, like a, I made a spreadsheet, but I don't have the opportunity to put it on the computer. So I do everything um, in longhand. So I these are all the whips that I'll be carrying over from this year. And then these would be all the new starts that I plan on having for the upcoming 2022 year. I have a spot missed open here. Um, I'll talk to you about that in July. <laughs> um, and then what I did was I already went through and ticked off what I would be stitching in certain months. Um, and then if I complete that two day rotation, I'll circle it. If for some reason I didn't work on that particular one, I'll put an X on it. And what I do is, even though it's written here in like what I'll be stitching in the month, uh, every month I'll get a scrap of paper and I'll write one to two, three to four, five to six, all the way down to the, all the number of days in that particular month. And then I'll mark down Wednesdays and I'll mark down Saturday and Sundays. And then the Fridays that I have Caleb, because that would be a three day uh, babysitting week as opposed to a two-day babysitting week. And I make decisions on the type of week it is and what I'm doing that day. Like Wednesdays, it's the first day that Caleb comes, but we also do a Zoom meeting. So I have to pick something where I don't have to be so focused on the pattern that I can also talk in and participate in the Zoom meeting. So I do look at those things. Um, like if a holiday is coming up or a birthday that is being planned or that I'll be hosting um, something or going somewhere, I take the, those days into consideration. And I have to say that for the most part, I stitch almost every day of the year. Um, but, you know, life happens and it doesn't always work out as planned. But, you know, the best laid plans, they have to be um, changed at times to make our make life work okay so that's the first thing i did i wrote down what i'm carrying over and then what i'm planning on starting then i made a list of what i would like to complete in 2022 so i selected 12 um, um, of my patterns that i would like to see completed in 2022 and then i also put um I did long shots um, and the long shots were a mini Mandela, um, a new start that I'm starting in January and Halloween Quaker by Leela Studio. Um, <clears throat> it's possible, but these are the ones I'd like to see done first. And we'll get back to that in a little bit. Okay, so January, what I will be starting in January. I would like to start... Um, and this is in no particular order uh, because I already went through this and they're probably a little bit out of order, but um, not by month, but by in the month, how I'm going to start it. So the first one is Heart and Hand, and this is Love You More, and I'm doing it on a 28 count white Ada. And I believe it's the call for threads. I did not kit up every single new project that I'll be having um in 2022 because um 
I think basically the expense of it, um, the threads and everything where I'm hoping to um, upcycle some by you know finishing them. And for instance, um, I just kept this out to show you. All these are threads that are in my Autumn in the Village by Stony Creek that if you've been watching me, um, most people have commented on that one, but these are quite a number of threads. So um, to tie them up like that and then at the end have all this extra thread so um, so I'm not um, I'm not kidding up everything I'm doing it maybe a month or two ahead of time so the beginning um, of the January ones are kitted up um, so then I will be starting puntini puntini when I think of winter I'm hoping to get this done I don't know I don't think it'll be done in a two-day rotation so I'm thinking I'm hopefully I can squeeze it in and February as um, as a stitch but it's starting in um, January and I'm stitching it on a 28 count mushroom Lugana and I think the white will show up really well then um, Alva gave me this pattern and this is A Little Luck by Lizzie Kate. I do not have too much for St. Patty's Day. Um, we don't celebrate, well, not that we don't celebrate, we don't decorate too much for St. Patty's Day, but I put it out with my March um, patterns that I've stitched, the monthly uh, series ones. So I thought um, maybe I'll do this as a little pillow. Um, the stitch count is 53 by 53. So it, it shouldn't be too big. And I selected an 18 count Ada in platinum for that one. And then specifically on, like this is when I say, like I, I look at the month and see when I'm going to stitch something. This one will be started on January 17th. Uh, that's my, was my mother's birthday. She would have been a hundred years old if she was still alive. I lost her way too early, but um, but she was very kind. And this is, and be kind to one another. So I will be stitching this um, in remembrance of her. I have a fabric being dyed for me by Silk Weaver, by Needleworkers Delight. And um, it was called Vanilla Swirl, I think he said. So um, he's dying me two pieces, one for this one, and then for the sister pattern that I ordered, um, and it's in all things be exceedingly diligent. And this one I'm starting in later on in the year. I'll, I'll, I'll get to that when I get to that month. But um, so the fabric's being dyed for both pieces and it should be ready in a couple of weeks. So that's January. So those are my new stars for January. And then it's going to be a push uh, or not a push, but and then the rest of the month I'm going to stitch on the things that I'd like to see completed in 2022. So they'll be selected first. And then if I have any days left, I'll select another whip. The only thing that changes every month is, or doesn't change every month, is that I have my focus piece. And the focus piece this past year has been Templar Prophecy, where I stitch on that every single month, no matter what the theme of the month is. Even Jolly July, um, I I stitched on my Templar Prophecy to make progress on it because it is such a large piece. And once I finish that one, I'll select another focus point piece that I will stitch every month. Um, but I haven't decided what that is. I'll, when, once Templar Prophecy is finished, then I'll select my next note focus piece. Okay, so that is January. Now February. February, I am going to start Easter Whimsies by Scissor Tail Designs. And this too will be stitched on a, an 18 count Ada in platinum. And this is the pattern. I'm planning on doing the Easter bunnies. I think I'll, I'll only do one pillow. I'm looking at the pattern. I should have been looking at it all this time. Uh, I'm going to start with the Easter bunnies and 
if I can do it in a two-day rotation, I don't know if I'll, I'll select another one this year, or I'll just put it in for next year. Um, you know, just add a little something every year to your to a collection. And then the next one I'll start is a blackbird, and this is Justice for All. And this I won as a giveaway that Kindred Stitcher Lisa Smith had on her video, and I was lucky enough to uh, win it. So I'm going to start this in February, and I'm going to stitch it on a 28 pound country mocha Lugana. Oops, there it is. I think it'll be really pretty. And I believe it's only two colors. And yes, they are. And I'm just trying to see if these are the call for colors. Yes, they're DMC uh, 221 and 939. So those are the two colors for February. And then the last one for February I will be starting is Blackbird Designs, and it's called Casting a Spell. I have the box. Um, it's still raw wood. I have to um, paint it yet, but I hope that I can get this done for next Halloween. And this is stitched on 32 count fabric, and since I don't stitch on 32 count, but I want it to fit perfectly. I'm going to stitch it on a 16 count, and this is Heartland uh, 16 count by Picture This Plus. So that will be started in February. Okay, March. March will be a little bit different this year in that I will be participating in. March Madness. And this was the idea, I believe, from Steel City Stitchers. Um, there are four young ladies that live in Pittsburgh, and they came up with this idea. And I learned a little bit more about it but from Dina, Half Stitch Cross Stitch, on her videos. So I decided that I would give it a try. So out of the whips, the 12 that uh, I'd like to see completed. I'm going to select eight of them. And these are the eight that I've selected to be part of my March Madness. Now, should I complete any of these prior to March, then since there's I only need eight and there's 12 on the list, I will just pick another one from the list that I haven't completed. And then worst scenario, if I did, then I'll go to my list that is um, a long shot for a finish, but I'll put it in um, just the same so that I have eight to work with. So I just haphazardly picked eight from, actually I chose these eight, and I put them here. So after putting two days on each one of them, that would be 16 days, eight times two, 16. Then after I look at each grouping, now I'm not going to I think what I'll do is I'll pull the names in my in one of my February um, videos right on air so that I don't like I don't know I you know like I can know well this one is further away so maybe I'll put it next to this one I'll just pull it on air and however it falls it falls and then when I finished them finished stitching on them, I'll look at the two and say, okay, which one's closer to a finish? Templar Prophecy or Autumn in the Village? Though I would like it be Templar Prophecy because it would be a nice um, push. Most likely Autumn in the Village will be closer to the finish. So the Autumn would go on this line. And then I'll, I'll do each one and see which one is closer to a finish. And then I'll move them on. So then I'll put another two days on each of them. And that's another eight eight days. So that comes out to 16 plus 8, 24 so far. And then I'll, which one's closer to a finish? That one moves on as well. Then I'll put another two days. That's another four. And then select that and that goes on. And I work on two days on that. So in total, I'll have worked on 30 days in the month, even though it's 31 days. And hopefully by the end, I'll have a finish. Now, if for some reason, um, 
I finished, let's say Quartem in the Village, I finished it here. And this one I haven't finished. I'll select probably the one, one of the other two and move that one to go against this one. Like if I, if I have to, I will, um, or like if I finish this on this, then this one automatically will go here. But if I need to move it, like, okay, so if Autumn finished here, then I would move this one here. Because I don't know how, how much stitching will be on it in, in, from now till February. Um, so I'm just giving you an idea of how I would start this. So then come February and I do my picks. I will add them to this to this list and then move them forward as the time goes by. So that's March. March is going to be March Madness, and um, and hopefully by the end of it, I will have one if not two finishes. Okay, then comes April. April is special to me because I was born in April and I got married in April. So for April, I will I will be starting. In all things, be exceedingly diligent. Um, I haven't decided if I, I will do this actually on my birthday or one of the other ones. I haven't decided yet because I love them all. <laughs> Next one is hands-on design, resting beach face. How can you not love this pattern? <gasps> oh, I love this. Um, okay, so that's April. And then this one is so cute. Um, core e batti core. Um, I believe Danielle sent this to me. I love Easter, or but it's called Easter in the Sun. And I just think it's so adorable. So adorable. And then I have to get in another long dog. And this is Opening Gambit, which is about chess. And uh, I love this. Anyway, I'm loving it and I'm giving it away when it's done. So I love it even more. <laughs> So that's April. So April will be those new starts plus a push on samplers. I have a lot of samplers that I've started and I would like to see some progress on them. So I'll push them um, a little bit forward in April. Then May will be these new starts. Uh, again, in no particular order. One of them will be this um, High Heels Collection, number three. I'm hoping to stitch this for Rebecca. She doesn't watch my videos. She doesn't have time. <laughs> um, between her work and Caleb, uh, her hand, she's always busy. So um, I can share it on, on this. Um, so I'm hoping um, to get this finished by next January. So um, yeah, so that I'll be stitching that one. I had stitched this one prior. And I gave that to Amy. And that soda stitch, I don't know if I, I mentioned it was the designer soda stitch. Then I'll be stitching on Stitchy Stars by Lori Holt. And finally in May, new start is going to be my Mirabilia. I ordered the, I have the um, beads that come with the packet. And what I liked about it, it was only two types of, two colors or two types of beads and so to me that doesn't that means it's not as quite as many as when people show like 10 packs of beads <laughs> um, I'm not really into that many beads even though I love sparkle and and things like that but um, in a finished piece like I think I rather see the stitching and I would like to stitch it on this <clears throat> it looks a little bit like the inner color in here but if it's surrounded by the darker, I shouldn't have too much trouble, but I haven't kitted it yet. And this is called Lavender Rose by Zweigart. It's a 28 count Lugana. Oops. So um, once I get the floss on that, I will see if it shows up. And if it does, I would be so happy. Okay, so, that, so that's May. Those are May new starts. And then the rest of the month, it's going to be maybe this or maybe that. Um, I, I'm going to leave it open to what I feel like stitching, even though I feel like stitching at all. Um, 
but what I'd like to maybe put a push on or get something finished or a, a little one started. Okay, so June will be Puntini Puntini again, and that is when I think of summer. I don't know if I showed the, um, the buttons. It comes with two buttons. In this one, it's a sailboat and a watermelon. And um, I don't remember what the winter one was, and I don't think I showed you the buttons, but in January, I'll share them with you. <laughs> so this will be um, a start in June, along with Gathering Berries from Lumin Luminous Fiber Arts. I've selected a Gloriana, and this is called Candy Apple Red. It looks really bright, but um, right now that's what I've selected, and it's going to be stitched on a 28 count cream Lugana. I think it'll be pretty. This will be first time stitching with a Gloriana thread. Then I will start. Um, by Plum Street, Miss Bingley's Library. And, oh, I did have a fabric for this. Yes. This is going to be stitched on 28 count cinnamon roll by Silk Weavers. I think it'll the house will show up um, nicely on it. Some of them I um, were, was able to select a, a fabric and um, put it with it. So in June, it's going to be those new starts, my focus piece, and what I started since January of the, that 2022. So what I haven't start, what I've started but haven't finished. I will um, put into that month of June to, to make some progress on it because you know when sometimes when you start something then you either bring it forward to the next month or two months later or you go back to what you've been stitching on prior to that so that month I'd like to stitch on what I've started in 2022 that I haven't finished then comes Jolly July and I'd like to do another alphabet one. Um, this year I did for my two nieces, great nieces actually, Ava and Sophia, I shared that. And then I did Caleb last year. So this year I plan on stitching Gianna's name and I will probably put it in one long piece. I haven't decided if I'm gonna go down this way or across, um, but I have time till, till July. Then I will, I can't remember if I stitched this one or not. Um, this was gifted to me by my friend Alva, and I don't remember if I did it last year. Once I take out my Christmas fab, um, things this year, if I see it, then I know I, don't, I won't stitch it again. But if I haven't, I will stitch it. And then I will also stitch this Lizzie Kate, and this is Mary String. I stitched the um, winter and summer one. So th this year I'll be stitching this one. And um, the Thanksgiving one. And then I will also be stitching one of the pra oops, Prairie Schooler patterns. I haven't decided which one. I have a, um, a number of in here of Prairie Schoolers. So I'll select one of those. And I have this, but I don't think I'm going to do this one for Caleb. I need one. Um, this is Tiny Modernist Mouse's Christmas Decorating. Um, I found a Puntini Puntini one on one two three Stitch that I saw somebody stitch, and I really liked it, but it was um, out of stock. So um, I put my name in for them to notify me when it does come in so that I can... Um, order it. And I think that one is the one I will stitch for Caleb. Then 
Um, so that's July, and July is Jolly July. So the theme was the uh, Christmas stitching. But also in July is the New Jersey Floss Tube Retreat, which is the third week in, weekend in July. It's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And Arlene Cohen from Works by ABC is running it. There is a Facebook um, group page that um, she has. There's also a waiting list if you'd like to uh, be considered uh, on attending. Um, we ha did not have it last year because of COVID. So it's it's been a while since we had the retreat. We had two retreats. This will be the third one. And I'm really excited about attending. And I have a new start planned to do at that um, retreat. And it is in the theme of Jolly July, it is by Bygone Stitches, Quaker Christmas 2. And I followed Dina from Half, Chris, Half Stitch Cross Stitch when she was stitching this, and it was just lovely. And um, I'm stitching it on a 28 count Ivory Lugana. And I haven't, no, I have not decided on the the colors yet. It is called for Gentle Arts Current, which would be that reddish, and then Blue Spruce, which would be the greenish. Um, but I haven't decided if I'm going to go with something else. Because it calls for 115 yards of current and 25 yards of the Blue Spruce. So um, I'll either get a hank of something or do a DMC conversion. I haven't decided. So that will be my July starts. And then, oh, oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't do the rest of July. Like, what am I going to do the rest of July? Um, well, um, if I have any Christmas themed things that I've been working on, I'll do that. If not, I'll just do what I want. Okay, um, that's July. August. August. New starts. One, two. Okay. The first one is Always Remember by Plum Street. And I'm going to stitch that on a 25 count Lugana in Stormy Night, I think by Swigert, and I think that'll be nice on there. Um, the lighting, <laughs> when I started stitching this, um, stitching, when I started videotaping this, the sun was shining, and um, let's see if I can get this to work. Here we go. The sun was shining, and it had rained this morning. It rained really hard. We got caught in a downpour, but we were in the store. But like we waited till it calmed down before we ran to our car. We had errands to run, so we uh, went out when it was raining, and then um, we came home, and the sun came out, and Sal's out in the backyard. He's making noise now. Um, I should close the window so that you don't hear him. I forget that you hear what's going on. Sorry about that. And um, so he went out to work in the backyard, and I came up to do my video, and then I didn't like it, and so I'm redoing it. <sighs> now that you know all my my inside stuff. So it was. So anyway, um, it is now four, almost four thirty, and the sun is going down. So I'm losing my lighting. So I just put on a, um, one of those ring lights on here. The next one I selected for August is a hands-on design so that I can possibly get it done for um, fall is Autumn Skies. And I love both of these patterns. It comes with the felt for the pillow, these, these two strips here. Um, and I also like this one as well. So I think I might do both of them. I don't have any fabric picked out yet, but I do like that. This was gifted to me 
I believe it was Danielle that gave me this as well. Um, she gave me a bunch of patterns that she must have stitched and said, you know, either stitch them or give them away. And um, I really like this was um, for attending, I think, one of the, the retreats in Amana. Uh, it's Souvenirs of the Heart, Autumn in Amana, and it's beautiful. Uh, the only thing is it's stitched on a 28 count, one over one. So um, my pillow will be larger, <laughs> to say the least. But I haven't decided. I don't think I will do the 20 count. I think I might do 18 count, um, Ada and make it a little pillow. I think it's adorable for fall with the acorns and the squirrels. I just love it. Thank you so much for the pattern. And so that was August. Oh, and then the rest of August, what am I gonna st stitch on? I'm gonna do a push on my Whipco card. And you're saying, Lori, you didn't mention Whipco. Well, I was, I was thinking about doing Whipco um, in last this past year, but I thought I had to have 25 whips and I didn't have 25 whips, but I've come to learn that you can put new starts on them as well. So I made up a board, a whip go board, and I randomly put numbers in one to 25. I didn't go in order in any order. I think I went one to two, five this way, and then that way. And then I just mix them up and then what happens is Jessie Marie selects two numbers a month but I think the first month in January she chooses three numbers so once the th three numbers are called you mark them that they were called and you have a goal like I did goals this past year well you have a goal for each one of them now the ones in all green at the bottom say a finish so by the end of the year I should have a finish on that now I'm thinking it I think you can put you can work on it through the year and as you're working on it you make notations for instance this one is buckleberry sampler and my goal here is complete rows u and v and w and z so when that's com i can pick that up at any time um but i can't mark off like if i should finish it by april or something and but this number which is number 25 isn't called till october or november i can't mark it as a finish until the number is called and for instance this one here it has 15 hours of stitching on it and this is La Lila Studio Halloween Quaker so what I did was I made a second um, board to go with that number and Lila Studio was number eight so on number eight since it said 15 hours if I work on something for two days my two-day rotation usually I put in three hours a day minimum usually so and that like is seven to ten <clears throat> sometimes I can stitch during the day if I'm not babysitting so I will tick off the number of hours and then when I finish on this board I'll know that I've finished it and I've met that goal but I it can't mark it off until it's called it could be called next December um, so that's how I guess my whip go game will be I made all my plans I put all my patterns in I put all my goals in now I just have to wait for the numbers to be called for it to count as if I finish it or something so if I finish something and it's not called for I'll mark it on the the other pattern and then when it's called all I have to do is mark that I either cross it out or color it in or something that I know that I've completed the whip though so um, there's no prizes or anything publicly that everybody um, puts in for like oh I got a whip go I win some no it's our, your own personal um, goal and you can treat yourself to what is whatever it is that you like <clears throat> so I haven't come up with my prizes yet <clears throat> oh, excuse me I got a frog in my throat but um, but it'll be fun. It'll be just something else. To, see, I, I don't get involved in too many sales because 
I don't stitch on I don't stitch monogamously and I do not stitch on something every single month except my focus piece so that's the only reason I don't like if somebody said oh let's stitch something um, start it together I can start it with somebody but I, I will not finish it with anywhere near <laughs> probably the time that they will okay so that's August so that would be a push on to my whip go then comes September so September Sorry, I got them a little mixed up since um, I'm re, re videotaping this. September will be a Joyous Day by Blackbird. Now, if you've been following me, um, last year I had scheduled this to be stitched on, I believe, this past July. And it starts with a satin stitch border. And I don't know, for some reason, it just wasn't sitting right with me. I didn't feel like attempting it. Um, I've, I've stitched that border, a border like that in the past. But, so I just put it aside. I selected something else from Blackbird. And I'm stitching this on a 28 count um, Country Mocha, Nugana. And call for threads. And the other one in September I will be starting is Jardin Privé Gentleman Quaker. And I'm going to do that light blue in Sapphire by Dinky Dyes. And the other, it's only calls for two colors, and the other color is supposed to be black, even though it shows more of a brown to me. It says colors 9, 31, and 310. So I haven't decided um, exactly what other color I'm going to stitch this. I was thinking of doing a navy blue and this blue. I think that would be nice. But I'll, I haven't decided. So that was for September and then the rest of the month will be um, sampler September, so it'll be as many samplers as I can get in in that month. October will be October will be, here's the other Lizzie Kate that I was going to start, and that's Thankful String for November, well, for the fall probably all for autumn and then I'd like to do blackbird designs blackbird it's the number three in the magical mystery tour of the Beatles songs and it's finished as a pillow and it's stitched on 30 count fabric and it's to finished six by six and three eighths so I probably do it on a 28 count and it's 75 by 87 and I, if I can find a frame for it, I'd love to um, put it in a frame because I'd like to add it to these two. This is Strawberry Fields and the Long and Winding Road here. So I'd like to put this one with that one. Um, and then after this one, I'd like to do, I think, Eleanor Rigby. I grew up with the Beatles, so um, I would like to um, finish, finish some of, most of them if I can. And then I'm going to start The Flower Shop by Thistles. And I'd like to do it on a 28 count Dove Gray Lugana. Now, this fabric to me looks like, has like some, let me take this out of here, some pinkish um, maybe color to it. And I think it would be pretty if I can find something like that. But um, if not, I think I would do it in the gray. There's some white in it that I want to make sure that, like this is, has other colors around it so it'll show, but this fence here looks like it won't show 
if I do it on certain fabric. So that's my main main goal all the time when I select a fabric is if the white is going to show. So th that's what I'm planning on stitching on that. And that was October. So October will be these starts plus a push for the 2022 finishes that I'd like to get done. Then comes November. And I was saying to myself, what can I do in November that would be different? I know. What's the first two letters in November? N-O. No. No new starts. Stitch on your whips. So that's the plan. Okay, that's the plan. Let's do it. Then comes December. What am I going to stitch in December? Well, I, I was in such a rush to get two patterns, and one of them was the summer, and this is the spring ABCs. I finished stitching the summer one, but I haven't fully finished it, so it'll be ready for next summer. And this one is spring ABCs. Kathy to Die House gifted me both patterns, and as um, soon as I finish this one, I'm going to send them back to her, and she can use them as giveaways on her channel. Um, okay, if she'd like, if she hasn't stitched them already. Anyway, so then I'm going to stitch the Scarlet House Little Deed Sampler. I love this um, pattern. It is 129 by 157, so it's not too large. It, um, this is done on 36 count, so that's why it's not too large. So that would be an equivalent to an 18 count. So maybe I can order one from um, Picture This Plus and do an 18 count, because usually their fabrics are softer when they're dyed uh, in Ada. And then I had this pattern Gee, I started stitching in 2017, and that's when I met McKenna from Stitching in Sequins at, at the New Jersey retreat. That was the first retreat I attended. Yeah, I think it was 2017, 18, and then 19 and 20, we didn't have it. Now we're in 21. I'm a little confused. <laughs> Okay, let's not talk dates, but I think I started because I retired in December 2016, and I think I found Floss Tube in 2017, and then 2018 is, um, I think, when we had our first retreat. Yes, 18, and I had just started Floss Tube, making Floss Tubes then, and I met um, McKenna at that first retreat and she when she went back home she was doing these little sales for the attic in um, I believe it's Mesa Arizona and I bought three of the patterns from her sale and they are Country Cottage Summer Seascape series and um, so let's see does this one say the attic yes this one has the, the um, emblem from the attic. So I don't remember which three exactly um, that I bought from them. But I bought three of these patterns. And I needed five to complete the series. You know, I thought about, oh, well, I can just do this house over here and change the colors. But it comes with the call for, let me hide it this way, threads for each of the houses. and children and boats and so it gives you the threads and they're silk threads so um i found then um my my needlework store needleworkers delight was able to order me one that was still being printed and then i found um another one down in um, cape may new jersey there's a cross stitch store there i can't think of the name right now but i'll, I'll look it up and i'll put it in the show notes and they had i think the last one i was looking for so I have all five of them and I've been holding on to them for like three years now and I just should stitch them because I, I love them and this is the first time that I bought it with threads and so I'm excited about trying uh, the silks like this. Okay, so I have this new start, the Scarlet House and Spring ABCs and that's my 
start for December. So those are all my plans and um, they can change, but for the most part, I, you know, I usually stick to them. Um, there was only one that I took out of my rotation this year and that was Oh Joyous Day, which I'm putting in this year. And I've added others, other finish, other um, patterns that I wanted to stitch. So it's not like I can't stitch any, start anything else, but this is the goal of getting things done on patterns that I have in my stash. And, um, and I see why people sometimes say this year it's going to be stitch from stash. Um, not all of these were, were in my stash. I bought new patterns as well. And I bought more that I'll show in my next video. But um, I, you know, you buy these things and so you have to stitch them. If you like them, you bought them. Otherwise, we're going to give them as giveaways in the future. So if you have any questions, please feel free to answer, answer, ask them, and I'll try to answer them. If it's um, a lengthy explanation, I'll answer it in my next vid regular video. Um, if it's something I can answer right away, I'd be happy to. And, um, and that's it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. So I hope I was clear enough and explained my plans. So until next time, stay well, take care. Love you guys. Bye.